There's already uh, three other countries uh, that are European NATO members who operate the Apache. Of course, the UK, the Netherlands, and the Greeks. And of course, the United States, who currently operates uh, a number of aircraft in both, uh, both in Germany as well in other locations uh, in Europe. Uh, there's already over 150 Apaches operating in Europe alone, and there's almost 1,300 operating throughout the world. So it is a, a platform that's combat proven. It's a platform that's proven to work well in theater, uh, and it absolutely is the right choice uh, to solve the crook requirement for Poland. The capabilities on the Apache are unmatched. It has both offensive sensors and defensive capabilities that make it the most survivable and lethal attack helicopter in the world. Uh, it's the only attack helicopter uh, in the Crook competition that has an onboard target acquisition radar. And that radar functions not only as an offensive acquisition, but also defensively in an, an electronic warfare environment, making it uh, the most survivable uh, aircraft uh, possible for Crook. It also is fully networked into the Link 16 NATO standard uh, network is the only attack helicopter to do so. And it has uh, a dedicated manned unmanned teaming system uh, that allows for vastly greater situational awareness uh, for its sensors and its weapons uh, than any other attack helicopter in the world. So the Apache is not only the, the most lethal attack helicopter in the world, it's also the best value. And this has been proven by the fact that it is the attack helicopter of choice of 17 other foreign military partners. And whether, like I mentioned, the, the European partners already, uh, with other operators around the world, there's almost 800 Apaches in the U.S. Army alone. And understanding the economies of scale, when you have a fleet that large, that makes the operation and the sustainment uh, of parts and, and maintenance over time far more valuable and effective. And the ability to, to work with other countries, to, and not only other countries, but also the United States government, to make the sustainability uh, very capable for Poland. I, I've heard that question many times, and a, a very interesting fact is that of the 17 countries that operate the Apache, Poland would be the seventh largest. There are eight other countries or nine other countries that are already smaller economies uh, that currently operate the Apache. So Poland is well within the capabilities um, of being able to, to acquire and sustain the aircraft. There's been recent acquisitions by Morocco, a much smaller country. There's been recent uh, announcement uh, by Australia. So there are, there are many members of the Apache family and Poland is well positioned to be one of those. The Apache does not need a dedicated fixed base. It does not need a large air base. The Apache is a U.S. Army piece of equipment. And the U.S. Army expects its equipment to be rugged, expects it to be survivable, and expects it to be able to operate in the dirt in an austere environments. You know, I have four combat tours myself with the aircraft. None of them were at big fixed bases. They were all in austere environments. Most recently, when I was fighting in Iraq in 2016, we were fighting off a dirt, a dirt strip in the, in the very backside of an operating base that was not a dedicated airfield. So the aircraft is designed to fight for long periods of time in the most rugged, the most austere environments possible.